My name is Sonia, and I'm a biblical counselor. And I don't know if you've processed this, but you really can have a beautiful relationship with Jesus and still want or need some therapy or counseling. It's perfectly okay. It says in scripture, multiple times actually in Proverbs, that wise people seek out wise counsel. And God has given wisdom to a lot of smart people in the area of therapy and counseling. So these people accrue all this information and they're there to help those of us when we need help. There's nothing wrong with seeking out that kind of wisdom from professionals in certain seasons. So this idea of being in a mentally healthy place, what does it look like to be in a mentally healthy place and how can I get there? There's all kinds of things to process when you're thinking about health. So we as humans are multifaceted. We're mind, we're emotion, we're body, and we're soul. And embracing our faith and therapy oftentimes will help us promote this holistic experience and approach to what it means to be fully well. And so when you think about taking care of your body, if your body had a sickness, you would so easily and naturally go to the doctor to maybe get medication or a diagnosis for that physical sickness. Well, oftentimes we have some things going on in our minds or in our emotions. And if we would seek out that same kind of wisdom to help us figure out what's going on, it would promote that healing. So you can promote those things that are going to make you better. It's the same way of when you're wanting to grow spiritually closer to the Lord and you start investing in spiritual depth and health, you can feel more connection in your faith and in your relationship with Jesus. For some people, there's still a stigma about counseling. Um, like, are people going to think I'm crazy if I go to counseling? If I seek therapy, does that mean there's really something wrong with me? Um, I just want to diminish all of that stigma because it's not real. And you can see over decades, more and more people have accepted that counseling and therapy can be incredibly healthy and helpful. So if you have that going on in your mind, let that stigma go. Now, one of the things for most of us is that we haven't figured out how to value taking care of ourselves. We spend a lot of time being hard on ourselves, um, telling ourselves what we should be doing better and working harder to do better. And then we also spend a lot of time taking care of the people around us. Maybe it's children, spouses, friendships, work relationships, whatever that may be. But to actually step back and say, you know what? I think I need to take care of myself so that I can take care of the other people in my life even better. It's that idea, like if you've ever been on an airplane and they say, like, hey, if you need to take the oxygen mask, make sure you put it on yourself before you try to help other people. Um, it's the same concept if you're considering your going to go to counseling for mental health or emotional health. Sometimes taking care of that is what will give you the ability to care for other people better. So integrating your faith into therapy will allow you to draw on your spiritual practices like prayer, meditation. You can use those tools that are part of your spiritual growth in with counseling. When you go to counseling or therapy, oftentimes they have just a wealth of knowledge of techniques and tools and practices that you can take away from that appointment, take back into your real life moments and start to apply. I can tell you one of the things I learned when I was going to a counselor was this idea of box breathing to help me when I felt anxious. I don't like big crowds. I don't like the dentist chair. And so I needed a tool, a technique that would help me learn how to calm myself down when I was in that space of feeling a little rattled and anxious. That one appointment has been able to help me now for years and years later. There are different seasons of needing counsel sometimes for many people. Sometimes you're going to go after an experience, like maybe you've just had your first baby and you're feeling a little postpartum blues and you want to go in for a couple of months while you adjust to what this new season of your life looks like. For some people, you've got some old stuff from maybe your childhood that you've kept in a little box and you've never opened the box up and dealt with it, and it'll take you a few months. Um, it's not this idea that you're going to go pay somebody to lay on their couch and talk for an hour and do that twice a month for the rest of your life. It's not usually like that. It should be a seasonal experience. When you go into counseling, sometimes there's a diagnosis attached to it. Maybe you are struggling with depression or anxiety or the symptoms of your ADHD, and those diagnoses can lead you to some help for your next steps.
But those diagnoses are not your identity. If you've chosen to see Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your identity is as a son or a daughter of the King. But a diagnosis can help you get to some of the next steps that you need for your healing in your well-being and in your your wholeness. So this idea of, can I love Jesus and actually go to counseling and therapy? Can those things coincide? Not only can they coincide, but they're a part of the wholeness of who you are. If you're thinking about seeking out counseling or therapy, I hope that you take your next right step and make that appointment.